Now let us look at what is handshaking theorem or you can say the handshaking lemma. Now this handshaking theorem says that let g v comma e be an undirected graph with m edges. Then 2m is equal to summation v belongs to vertices degree of v. It means that the sum of degree of all vertices is twice the number of edges because if uh, m is representing the number of edges okay and this is the sum of degree of all vertices sum of degree of all vertices so this handshaking lemma uh, theorem or handshaking lemma says the sum of degree of all vertices all vertices is twice the number of number of edges in the graph okay for example let us say this is the graph this is the vertex v1 this is vertex v2 and this is representing the vertex v3 and these are the edges that we have now what is the degree of vertex v1 degree of vertex v1 is 2 what is the degree of vertex v2? It is 2. What is the degree of vertex v3? It is also 2. So if I say the sum of degree of all vertices, that is we are adding degree of vertex v1 plus degree of vertex v2 plus degree of vertex v3, that should be equivalent to twice the number of edges. So twice the number of edges. Okay. So how many edges are there? This is, there are three edges. This is edge e1. This is edge e2. And this is representing edge e3 so the sum of degree of all vertices that is 2 plus 2 plus 2 degree of vertex v1 plus degree of vertex v2 plus degree of vertex v3 should be equal to 2 into the number of edges which is equal to 3 so you can say the sum of degree of all vertices should be equal to the twice the number of edges that is represented by the handshaking theorem now this one more thing that you can say just by looking at this handshaking theorem that is that number of all number of odd vertices the number of odd vertices in a graph in a graph is always even is always even okay why you can say the number of all odd vertices in a graph is always even just by looking at this particular theorem now for example this theorem is saying the sum of degree of all vertices is twice the number of edges correct now we can have a graph uh, where the degree of a vertex can be odd or degree of vertex can be even correct now for example let us say this is a graph which is having four edges this is so four vertices vertex v1 vertex v2 vertex v3 and vertex v4 so vertex v1 the degree of vertex v1 is 3 the degree of vertex v2 is 2 the degree of vertex v3 is 3 the degree of vertex v4 is 4 uh, it is 2 now here we have two vertices that is the vertex v1 and the vertex v3 both are having odd degree both are having odd degree correct so in a graph we can have a vertex which is having odd degree or we can have a vertices which is having even degree so this entire number this can also be submitted this way the same sum of degree of vertices where degree is odd plus sum of degree of vertices where degree is even right so do you understand this so do you, are you following what i'm saying i'm saying uh, we understand the formula that sum of degree of all vertices is equal to twice of number of edges but that sum of degree that graph may be having odd uh, degree as odd and the graph may be having degree as even so in total when i'm saying summation of degree that contains both the odd degree vertices plus both the even degree vertices now if we add both of them then that will be equal to uh, 2e that is uh, twice the number of edges now this summation that is uh, summation degree of even vertices now because it, degree is always even because here the degree is always even, so we are always going to get always going to get going to get even 
uh, even number here. We are always going to get even number. That means if we add the sum of degree of all vertices where the degree is even, so we can have uh, even number here. But here, because it is an odd number, so if we have odd vertices, if we have odd vertices with odd degree, odd degree, with odd degree, then we can get an odd number. Other, otherwise, if if we have even vertices, even number of vertices, number of vertices with even degree, with odd degree, odd degree, then we can get a even number. Do you understand what I am saying? I am saying that uh, again I am repeating, sum of degree of all vertices is equal to twice the number of edges. Correct? Now this sum of degree can be divided into two parts. One is the vertices which are having odd degree plus the vertices which are having even degree. So for example here in this particular case, there are two vertices which are having odd degree and there are two vertices which are having even degree. The sum of degree of all vertices will be the degree of odd vertices plus the degree of even vertices. Correct? Now this degree of even vertices is always going to give an even number because uh, it is uh, we are adding uh, we are making a sum of even numbers only so this is always going to give a even number but if the degree of odd vertices are there now this can be an odd number or this can be an even number why it can be an odd number if there are odd number of vertices if there are odd number of vertices with odd degree now this can give a odd number if there are odd number of vertices with even degree sorry if there are even number of vertices with odd degree again i'm repeating if there are even number of vertices with odd degree then we can get a even number correct now this is always even this number this number is always even this number can be odd or it can be even but we are always getting an even number here because here you can see we have 2 into e so we are always getting an even number so because it is even so the second number it has to be even it has to be even it has to be even it can never be odd it can never be odd see this is an important result it can never be odd it means uh, we have the vertices which are having odd degree are always even the vertices which are having odd degree are always even the vertices uh, which are having which are having odd degree or consider the number of vertices the number of vertices which are having odd degree is always even in graphs in graphs okay do you understand what i'm saying the vertices which are having odd degrees always even in graphs so that is called as a hand shaking theorem or you can say the hand shaking lemma so the same result that i'm saying the undirected graph has even number of vertices of odd degree that we just proved correct now look at this one here in this uh, diagram they're saying in a graph with directed edges the in degree of a vertex v which is denoted by d minus uh, is a number of edges with v uh, the terminal vertex uh, as their terminal vertex and the out degree of v is denoted by d positive is the number of edges with v as the initial vertex okay they are just telling what is the in degree and out degree now for example if i say this this particular node now what is the in degree here in degree that is represented by d uh, minus okay uh, d minus in this vertex c in degree means that what is what is the number of vertices which are in degree which are coming inside so here this is the edge that is coming inside and this is the edge that is coming inside and this is the edge that, that is coming inside so for c the in degree is 3 correct now if i say what is the out degree of c out degree is presented by plus sign so for c what is the out degree that is this is the out degree and this is the out degree so it is 2 okay so in degree of c is 3 as well as the out degree of c is 2 correct now in the same way if i say for vertex d the for vertex d the in degree is represented by d, d minus so what is the in degree that is the number of edges that is coming inside this is coming inside this is coming inside so in degree of d is 2 and what is the out degree that is represented by t d plus for d and what is the out degree so this is going out and this is also going out so the out degree is also 2 for this d Correct. Now you understand what is the in degree for a graph and what is the out degree for a graph. Okay. Now 
here they are saying let graph g is equal to v comma a be a graph with directed edges then the sum of in degree of a vertex v is equivalent to the sum of out degree of a vertex v which is equivalent to the number of edges which is equivalent to the number of edges now this is an important result let me tell you what this result is saying assuming that we have this graph this is the vertex a this is the vertex b this is the vertex c and this is the vertex d and this is a directed graph because they are saying it is a directed edge so this is a directed graph so there must be some kind of directions that are given so we can have assuming these directions some random directions i am taking correct and we have one self loop also now they are saying the summation if we add all the in degrees for a vertex v for all the vertex v that should be equivalent to the sum of all the out degrees correct now for example if i say for the vertex a for the vertex a what is the in degree in degree for the vertex a is the number of edges that is coming inside a so there's only one edge that is coming inside a and that one edge is represented by this so for in degree for a is 1 in the same way what is the in degree for d in degree for d is 2 why because this is also coming inside and this is also coming inside correct now what is the in degree for c so in degree for c is 1 what is the in degree for b so what is the in degree for b this is coming inside as well as this self loop is also coming inside so it is also 2 so what is the in degree of all these vertices that is 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 which is representing a total of uh, 6 correct in the same way if we add the out degree so what is the out degree for vertex a so out degree for vertex a is the edges that is going outside a which is only this edge so there is only one edge which is going out so it is 1 what is the out degree for vertex b so there is two edges which are going out so out degree for vertex b, b is 2 what is the out degree for vertex c so out degree for vertex c is represented as 2 because this uh, this is also going outside this is also going outside and what is the out degree for vertex d so out degree for vertex d is represented as 0 now this is a small mistake here for in degree uh, out degree for vertex a is 2 because for a this is also go going out and this is also going out so the out degree of our vertex a is also 2 so if we add all these numbers then it will become 2 plus 2 plus 2 which is representing 6 okay so the in degree for all in this particular graph the in degree for vertices is 6 which is equivalent to the out degree for the vertex and if you count the number of edges there is 1 edge 2 edge 3 edge 4 edge 5 edge and 6 edge therefore the number of edges is also 6 that is also same correct now this is a uh, uh, theorem now let us look at the next theorem here now here in this graph they are saying what is a complete graph so a complete graph on vertex n denoted by k n complete graph is denoted by this symbol so most of the time in examination hall they are just going to give you this terminology or this symbol it is a simple graph that contains exactly one edge between each pair of distinct vertices exactly one edge between each pair of distinct vertices now for example this is a complete graph with only one vertex this is a complete graph with two vertices complete graph with three vertices complete graph with four vertices complete graph with five vertices complete graph with six vertices okay so if this is representing the number of vertices number of vertices and this is representing the number of edges okay so if the number of vertices is one so number of edges are zero if the number of vertices is two the number of edges in a complete graph is one if the number of edges is 3, the number of vertices, uh, number of vertices in a complete graph is 3, the number of edges is also 3. Okay, so uh, see, complete graph means we should have an edge between every pair of vertex. If the number of edges are 4, you know, number of vertices are 4, the number of edges are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, there are 6 edges. If the number of vertices are 5, then how many edges are there? That is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 so there are 10 edges if the number of vertices are 6 then you can count what is the number of edges that are present for this given graph now you have to tell if the number of vertices are n then what will be the number of edges in a complete graph correct now this can be easily found out uh, by doing this addition now you can see this is uh, 
0 and 1 so difference between these two terms is 1 difference this between these two terms is 2 difference between these two terms is 3 uh, difference this is 3 difference between these two terms is 4 the difference between the next term should be 5 so for 6, six vertices there should be 15 edges so the difference is always coming out to be a natural uh, natural number okay right so if i say uh, what should be the number of vertices in a complete graph with the uh, n vertices that should be n into n minus 1 divided by 2 now let us uh, prove this so if we represent this n into n minus 1 that is 1 into 1 minus 1 divided by 2 which is equal to 0 we represent this one it is 2 into 2 minus 1 divided by 2 which is representing 1 now for this case it is 3 into 3 minus 1 divided by 2 which is representing 3 for this case it is 4 into 4 minus 1 divided by 2 which is representing 6 right so if we have a total of n vertices in a complete graph the number of edges should be n into n minus 1 divided by 2 that is here that we studied the complete graph now this is representing a cycle a cycle cn consists of n vertices v1 to vn and edges v1 v2 and v2 to v3 and up to so on vn minus 1 to vn the cycles are represented like this i think this is very simple and intuitive and i don't have to explain this one next is a wheel uh, again it is also very intuitive uh, it is uh, always having a cycle but there's a one vertex in middle always there's a cycle and there's one vertex in the middle now this is representing a wheel okay now the next uh, is saying what is a bipartite graph a simple graph g is called as a bipartite if its vertex v can be partitioned into two disjoint sets v1 and v2 such that every edge in the graph connects a vertex in v1 and a vertex in v2 so that no edge in g connects either two vertices v1 or v2 then uh, uh, v1 or v2 when this condition holds we can pair we can call the pair v1 and v2 as bipartition of the graph set v and g okay i think uh, by the definition you uh, will not be able to get it let me explain it to you more uh, properly see in a graph uh, we can have a graph right so this is a graph which is representing uh, vertex a b c and d we can also have a graph which is representing vertex a this is representing vertex b this is vertex c this is vertex d okay we can have vertices like this correct now when i'm saying bipartite graph bipartite now this bipartite word is meant by pi plus partition by plus partition by means two partitions you already know that means can you uh, divide a graph into two partitions can you divide the graph into two partitions such that the vertices which are in first partition should not be having any edge between them correct right for example here uh, if i say can i divide this graph into two partitions no i'll explain to you what I'm, i want to say i want to say if uh, we can create two sets between the vertices like there are a b c and d there are two uh, there are four vertices we can create two sets here first set may be having some vertices it can be a and b for example the second set may be having some vertices which can be uh, c and d for example now here for these vertices there, there can be edge between set one to set two or there can be edge between set two to set one but the vertices which are in the one first set will not be having any edge between them for example this is allowed there's an edge between a to c is allowed there's an edge between b to c is allowed there's an edge between b to d is allowed these edges are allowed right so this kind of graph which is having which we can divide into two sets such that the one set will not be having an edge between between them then that kind of graph is called as a bipartite graph now here this is representing a bipartite graph but this is not representing a bipartite graph because even if we create two sets that which is having a and d or b and c now between a to b this is also fine this is also fine but this should not be there this should not be there so this is not a bipartite graph let me give you an example of a bipartite graph so that you will be able to understand more clearly here assuming that these two graphs are there now the best way to identify whether it is a bipartite graph or not is by taking two colors assuming that uh, we are marking this as red okay so all the adjacent vertices to g mark them as green so this is adjacent vertex to g and this is also adjacent vertex to g so mark them as green correct 
now take the next vertex for example we discussed with a so take the adjacent vertices of a which are f mark them as red e mark them as red and c mark them as red that means all the adjacent vertices of a uh, you mark them as red correct then again take the next color which is the red color for the vertex f or any take any red vertex mark all the adjacent vertices as green so this is the adjacent vertex which is green okay now if we mark all the vertices now you can try and divide these vertices in two sets okay so the first set for this one will be having g f e and c g f e and c now there should not be any edge between g f e and c there should not be any edge between g f a and c and the second set will be containing a b and d there should not be any edge between a b and d if this is happening then this is a bipartite graph now let me try and connect okay between g to a g to a there is an edge so we connect g to a between g to d there is an edge so we connect g to d between uh, f to a there is an edge f to a there is an edge between f to b there is an edge f to b there is an edge between f to d there is an edge f to b there is an edge between uh, e e to a there is an edge e to a there is an edge e to b there is an edge e to d there is an edge okay so there are three edges for e also this is one two and three there are only three edges for vertex c there are again three edges which are connecting a b and c so vertex c is connected with a it is connected with b and it is connected with d okay now you can see we have created all the edges which are uh, there for this graph and the graphs and the vertices which are in the same pair they are not having any kind of edge between them and this set is also not having any kind of edge between them so this graph is a bipartite graph this graph is a bipartite graph okay and this is correct now if you look at the second graph well, let us try to see if it is a bipartite graph or not start coloring one vertex with let us assume green color now all the adjacent vertices mark them as red so adjacent vertices a adjacent vertices e adjacent vertices b adjacent vertices d and adjacent vertices c now you see the edges the vertices which are having the same color they are having an edge between them so it is not it is not a bipartite graph it is not a bipartite graph so bipartite graph will not be having any the vertices which are having same color will not be having any edge between them so now you understand what is a bipartite graph okay so the definition is a simple graph if and only is bipartite if and only if uh, if uh, it is possible to assign one of the two different colors to each vertex of graph so that no two adjacent vertices no two adjacent vertices are assigned the same color that we have already seen in the previous example okay now this is representing this is just giving uh, some examples of a bipartite graph now for example here in the first graph this is a bipartite which is k23 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 means 2 is representing the vertices which are in first set and 3 is representing the vertices which are in second set now this is representing k35 there are three vertices in first set and there are five vertices in the second set okay this is k3 three vertices in first set three vertices in the second set this is k26 three were two vertices in first set and six vertices in second set so bar bipartite graph will be represented by k n comma m where the first set will be having n vertices and the second set will be having m vertices and they can have an edge a number of edges between them now that was called as a bipartite graph now in the next video let us look at more uh, concepts related to the graph theory